The idea that media content seemed capable of exerting some kind of direct and immediate mass mind control over a passive public had taken hold in the popular imagination. In this view, which media researchers call the magic bullet theory, the assumption is that media messages act on us directly, like shots from a gun, leaving our minds changed in their wake. A view of media violence as all powerful and viewers as essentially passive that continues to shape debates about media violence to this day. But for Gerbner, these cause and effect arguments were simply wrong when it came to making sense of media influence. More science fiction than science. They were old approaches based on the outdated notion that people are passive and mass media works on them, like some great mind control device, like a stimulus applied to lab animals, controlling what we think from the outside. This way of doing things may have made things easier for social scientists, allowing them to measure effect by examining and comparing our minds before and after we're exposed to media messages and campaigns. But in Gerbner's view, the very idea of a before and after didn't make much sense in the media context. For the simple reason, as he used to say, that with media, there is no before. We are born into a mediated environment. The question is, how to measure the effects of a force that is present from the start. A sea of images, as media scholar Marshall McLuhan liked to say, that has become so familiar to us that we're often as blind to its all-encompassing presence as a fish is to water. It's like the fish in the water. We don't know who discovered water, but we know it wasn't a fish. A pervasive medium, a pervasive environment yeah. is always beyond perception. We have become so accustomed uh, to our cultural environment uh, it's like uh, fishing that doesn't know that it's swimming in water because it has never experienced anything else. This leads us to the notion of cultivation. Cultivation is a stable system of messages and images that shape our conception of the world and of ourselves and of life itself and of society and of power. Now the question is, how do you measure cultivation? This is a research problem that we faced and we resolved it in the following way. We give surveys to large groups of uh, representative respondents. Uh, these surveys have a series of questions, not about television, not about media, but these are questions about life, question about security, question about values, question about attitudes. For example, we ask them, what are your chances of encountering violence on an average weeknight? Is it one in a hundred or one in fifty? We ask, would you be reluctant to go down on the street in your own neighborhood at night, yes or no. Then we separate the responses into heavy and light viewers. And we find that in almost every instance, the heavy viewers exhibit a greater sense of insecurity. And we attribute that to the great frequency of violence encountered on television. The response pattern of heavy viewers tends to converge into what we call the television mainstream. So that with heavy viewers, the usual differences among different social groups, the differences of age, of gender, of income, of education, begin to erode. The heavy viewers, for all practical purposes, live in a meaner world. They integrate and absorb a sense of, of danger, of mistrust, of meanness in the world is what we call the mean world syndrome.